The NGAD flew some time ago, so every other aircraft is obsolete. Do you have an idea how hard it is to introduce a new aircraft in service? Well, if you don't, let's see it together in three minutes. Let's start from the point when the first deliveries to the first units are ready. At this point, an immense amount of work has been already done, but this is a subject for a different video. The first units of receiving the aircraft are usually some test and development units. For a new aircraft, there is only a limited number of pilots that could train other pilots, and the entire training syllabus needs to be designed. Basically, the aircraft manuals have to be written, and not just how to fly it, that is probably the simple part, how to use it as a weapon. Also, the ground engineers need to be trained and they have to write their manuals too. And in general, the first group of pilots and engineers become the trainers of the other pilots and the other engineers. If it is a, a relatively large scale deployment, a specific training unit is set up. For example, a famous and successful one was the Tornado Training Establishment in Cottesmore in the UK, which basically trained almost all the pilots and uh, many of the engineers that actually work on the Panavia Tornado. Um, NATO countries often exchange and consolidate these kind of facilities, but training albeit fundamentally is not everything. With the new aircraft usually come new tools and new equipment that needs to be made available to the teams on the line of flight. Specific spares will be needed, and so they need to be acquired. Some aircraft require dedicated housing, for example like the B2, so a new infrastructure needs to be built. Engine test facilities need to be acquired or adapted, and there is other new equipment in there. If new weapons come with the aircraft, well, that is a program not too dissimilar from the aircraft itself. Modern smart weapons are complex and they do require a specific know-how to be used and maintained. And for anything that can't be done on the line of flight, specific maintenance centers need to be set up, and usually in the West this is done by the civilian contractors. And this opens a can of worms. Something crucial but not visible is a complex web of contracts, policies, procedures that need to be in place for the military to work with the civilian counterparts. If this bureaucratic and administrative infrastructure is not in place, nothing happens. And the large number of people that you can find in Western Air Forces specialized in basically paperwork are necessary exactly for this reason. Every modern aircraft sits on top of a large pyramid made of people, equipment and procedures. We as observer often see the machine, the pilot and the mission, but behind that there is an immense amount of work that needs to happen for the mission to happen. It is a large and complex system that, like everything which is large and complex, is prone to failure. If just one component fails, everything fails and the mission is not going to happen. This is a major vulnerability of modern air forces and modern military machines in general, and everybody is actually aware of that. In fact, doctrines like cyber warfare or asymmetric warfare are born exactly to exploit these vulnerabilities. And to learn how all of these are going to interact, please click on the videos that are going to appear beside me. Thank you very much for watching and see you there.